It's Wednesday, July 17th here at the West End Gun Club. It's just after 5.30. Um, it's about crack of dawn right now. Uh, I decided to come out here really early just so I can get uh, get done shooting before it starts warming up here. The uh, weather in SoCal has already been hitting high 90s, 100 degrees last weekend. Um, so if I'm going to do any shooting, I want to do it before it gets really hot. So um, here at the main line today because I want to do a little bit more work with the 224 Valkyrie. I haven't shot it. Uh, ever since I got it, uh, the upper about six months ago or so, but we've made some hand loads, so we're gonna try that out today. But I also got a new scope mount to use my Razer HD Gen 2 on it, so we're gonna be able to actually shoot some some groups with it because I'll actually have a higher higher magnification optic, so I can take that eliminate that factor of using a low mag optic when um, doing the load testing. So it's nice to try that out today. So let's go ahead and get set up. Um, it should be kind of uh, sort of busy here at the range. Um, the range uh, maintenance staff is already here. They were here before I got here and they're, I guess they're doing some work um, around the other side of the facility. So I heard, he told me there's gonna be some trucks moving back and forth. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, let's get unpacked and start shooting. As you can see here, I have the Razer HD Gen 2 4.5 to 27 by 56 on this uh, 224 Valkyrie upper. I acquired a Seekins Precision mount. It's their, it's their uh, single or one piece mount for the AR-15 height or AR height uh, applications. And uh, I picked this mount specifically because Seekins makes a good mount. It was relatively inexpensive, uh, comparatively speaking, it's about 150, 150, 160. Um, so, and I also got a 10% off coupon from SWFA, so it, it worked out, right? Um, so that's why I picked this one up. And it allows me to use this HD Gen 2, which I don't currently have mounted to any rifle right now, um, to use for testing. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just use some factory ammo to get sighted in or uh, get the get the optic uh, on paper. And I need to get some tools first. So we're gonna go ahead and get this on paper. I have the target set with the 50 yards. Um, I bore sighted it in the garage. It's it's sort of on. I think it should hit paper at 50. Some parallax. I don't have any magazines for uh, 224 Valkyrie. So I'm still using my sled. Uh, 224 Valkyrie uses 6.8 SP, SPC magazines. Oh, we're relatively on. It's a little low, but we'll take a second shot just uh, since this is a clean bore. Uh, just for the record, it's 2774 feet per second, cold bore, clean bore. Second shot was a little bit to the right of the first one. 2765. Take a third shot here. Man, um, it's not even shooting a group at 50, which is kind of disconcerting. But it also could be because I'm not having the bags rested correctly, so uh, we'll worry about that later. Let's go ahead and uh, let's move this right. The windage Altec uh, set screws are a little bit tight because I put some purple Loctite in here. Just a dab, a very small dab, because they tend to come out during a recoil or they tend to drift out. And I don't wanna, and so it's nice to have these just to, uh, nice to have that Loctite in there just to guarantee that it's not gonna back out. 
Let's go ahead and move right about uh, two tenths of a mil. Now I'm going to go ahead and go out to the target and uh, move it out to 100. For the hand loads that we're shooting today, I've uh, shot, I've created two batches, one with Varget and one with Reloader 17. I would have used Reloader 15, but I'm actually out of that stuff. Reloader 15 is what I would have used in an AR for 253. And the Sierra Data actually lists uh, Reloader 15 slightly better than Varget in terms of max velocity, but Reloader 17 is uh, better than all, uh, all the powders that I have at home um, as far as velocity is concerned. But we're going to go ahead and shoot, uh, I've got some Starline Virgin Brass, unfired. I didn't resize it, so that's kind of the bad thing. Probably should resize it to get consistent neck tension. But we're going to go ahead with uh, Varget Starline Virgin Brass CCI BR4s with the 90 grain SMKs. Uh, we're going to start with 23.4, go to 23.6, 23.8, 24, and 24.2, which is over max. But um, I've been reloading for a while, and so I kind of have an idea of how the AR should shoot as far as... Uh, velocities are concerned and pressure signs so if I start seeing it happen at 23.8 then we'll we'll know not to shoot those but series 222 or triple deuce is going to be 23.4 grains of argot Slow, 2619, very slow. It dropped a good four inches on target. Okay, but we're looking at average velocity of five rounds is uh, 2620, 2620 feet per second with the 23.4 grains of Varget, standard deviation is 7.5, so you spread at 20. Let's take a look at that brass. find it. Brass looks good. Primers look good. No swipes. No uh, no ejector marks. So we're good. Group is about two inches, inch and a half vertical. Windage is about one inch or less. But we're looking at an average of 2657. Street spread 35, standard devi deviation 15.3. Five rounds, 23.6 grains of target. Don't know what happened there. So, yeah. We have a four shot group of about an inch, inch and a quarter, but then the fifth shot blew it out to like three or four inches. So 23.8 grains of Varget is only uh, 2672, extreme, uh, standard deviation 11.2, extreme spread of 28. So again, the brass looks good. No cratering, no flattening. Primers are good. No, no ejector swipes, no ejector marks, no extractor marks. Pressures look good, it's just the grooves look like shit. Twenty-seven oh two again. So this group that I just fired looks respectable it's about an inch 
There was one windage shot that was probably me, but I'm still getting vertical dispersion. But we're looking at average of 2707, standard deviation is 7.9, extreme spread is 17 with 24 grains, which is over max. I'm gonna go two tenths, a uh, 24.2, which is three tenths over max, according to Sierra's book. But let me find my brass, make sure that the brass looks good. The interesting aspect about that last batch or last string was that all the brass was in one spot, exactly. So these are some consistency there as far as my ejection is concerned. Brass looks actually good. Um, primers look good, no cratering. Still, uh, can't really see it on camera because I'm not really focused in, but there's no, no cratering, no flattening, no ejector marks. Brass looks good. Yeah. Really crappy group. So that didn't work too well. Um, as far as the data is concerned, 27, 26 feet per second, standard deviation 10.2, extreme spread of 27. We'll take a look at the brass. Okay, now this set of brass, no pressure issues that I can tell. Um, yeah, slight ejector mark, maybe. I have to clean the brass on this one. No, no, it's good. Yeah, you might be seeing some ex an extractor mark here on the lip here on some of these that I didn't notice on previous shots. So yeah, you might be hitting, no, nah, that's about good. I don't think there's any issues here. I oh, know it's borderline. It's borderline. I think you might be seeing some ejector mark here. So primers look good still. No flattening, but obviously in hotter weather, this might be an issue. But the velocity is where I want it to be, above 2700. Otherwise, what's the point of shooting this Valkyrie if you're not going to shoot heavies at a high velocity? So here we have the targets. I swapped out my paper uh, and I brought in the targets with the groups with Varget. And uh, here's 23.4. And you look, this is a great group. Um, but this vertical dispersion with this with this round here is disgusting. But this right here is about a half inch screw. If you look at this four, um, it's you know barely wider than my fingertip. But this round makes it look really bad. But once you start increasing the velocities, it starts to open up. I'm still getting the vertical dispersion here. Inch group here through this round here. This is the fourth round. This is 23.8 grains of Varget. 24 grains of Varget. It's about an inch. But look, I don't understand what's going on here with my my vertical could be me the way I'm holding this gun with the UBR stock. I don't know. Now here's 24.2. It's about an inch, inch and a inch, just over an inch. Groups are nothing to write home about. I mean, this looks pretty impressive if you look at this by itself. But once you add that, it starts to make it look bad. I don't know. The trend seems to be a vertical. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and shoot the reloader 17. Uh, this is just my zero target, so with the factory ammo, just working my way up and adjusting. But yeah, let's uh, let's see if we can get the Reloader 17 to shoot. We're gonna go ahead and shoot the next string of fire with uh, Reloader 17. Again, this is 90 grain SMKs, Virgin Starline brass, CCR BR4s. So we're gonna start off with 26.2, go to 26.4, 26.6, 26.8, and 27. I do not recall what max was for this, but I. Think I think, think the max might be 26.8, but we went two, two, two grains over. Two tenths, sorry, two tenths of a grain over, not two grains. Two grains would be catastrophic. Um, but uh, based on what we saw of Varget, we should be okay, but I've never shot Reloader 17, and for some reason I had a pound of this stuff unopened. Um, 
in my cabinet. So we'll roll with it. And fortunate it was actually usable for 224 Valkyrie. Wow, 2715. Holy crap, this is fast. Did I mix up my rounds? Huh. This is really fast. 2715. 2749. Holy crap. I better look at this brass. Better look at this brass before I keep going. That's kind of hot. I wonder if I mixed my rounds up and I went the wrong order when I put this in. Holy crap, that's kind of fast. The brass looks okay. This actually looks pretty good. Man, 2749. How am I shooting this so fast? I wonder if this is the 27 grains. I wonder if I put them in the box in the wrong order. The group's actually pretty good. The first round was lower than the rest. I'm going to chalk that up to being the fact that it was a uh, different powder going over Varget. But yeah, the last four rounds of that group look really good. We're looking at an average of 2729, which is already fast as fast as fast as the uh, over max Varget load. Standard deviation of 13, extreme spread of 34. All right, we're gonna go ahead and shoot this next batch. We're gonna keep another close eye on it because if it, if I actually didn't reverse the order of these rounds when I put them in the box, that would mean these are gonna start hitting 2,800 feet per second. I don't think that's relatively safe in the market or in the Valkyrie. Not sure if that's gonna be over pressure. So 2729, for over 2729 average, we need to be worried here. So series 228, we're gonna shoot 26.4 grains of reloader 17. Wow, we're getting up there, it's 2752 feet per second. I may have to stop shooting the rest of the string or the rest of these rounds. <laughs> but it's shooting good, I'll tell you that. Through one ride left. Oh, 
Oh, this one opened up pretty bad. I don't know what happened in the third and fourth round. Okay. Third and fourth round got thrown off, but the fifth, one, two, and five look good. Third and fourth round are thrown. But let's take a look at that brass. Brass looks good. No primer flattening. Wow. Uh, okay, that might be an ejector swipe. Okay, that might be an ejector swipe. All right, we're getting close. I've shot a hot 223 before. I mean, I shoot I shot service rifle and so some of my 80 grain rounds, my 80 grain loads were were flattening primers. But I was trying to max out velocity with the 80 grains in a service rifle barrel. But I've never had any catastrophic failures in 223 because the AR is a robust platform. I mean, should have no issues with hot loads with a good chamber. Um so 26.4 reloader 17, we're talking 2760 average, standard deviation is 17, extreme spread is 16. And I just remembered, I actually think I have the Sierra, that Sierra PDF on my phone. I do. Oh, yeah, here we go. So, according to this, 90 grain match king, reloader 17. Wow, I'm this should not be. Should it supposed to, according to this, max load is 27 grains of reloader 17, and it should only be hitting 2,700 feet per second. I'm already over 2,700. Wow. Okay, I'm going to shoot more, the next string at 26, 26.6. This is, uh, this could be a little dangerous here. Because I'm not, I don't think we should be hitting this fast. And I know for a fact that I didn't miscalculate my or misweigh these things, so let's co keep a close eye on these. So we're looking 26.6, reloader 17. We're hitting 2798 feet per second on this load. But it's about an inch over an inch group. It's got some up and down. So it's 26.6, reload or 17, we're looking at 2780 feet per second, standard deviation of 14.4, extreme spread of 34, which is pretty wide. Looking at this, the brass still looks pretty good. I'm just not seeing any pressure signs, but I don't feel comfortable shooting these anymore. I don't know if I want to go four more tents up. Yeah, we're getting ejector swipes here, I think, yeah. Starting to see a little bit there. It's, I'm a little concerned about this. I don't think I want to shoot the rest of these. You know, it's just not, it's not worth, it's not worth shooting this, right? I mean, it could, I might want to, I might want to check online to see what people are getting with this, but I don't know. I don't feel comfortable right now shooting these the last two uh, batches or strings of fire of five because I anticipate we'll go into 2850 and that's that's faster than you should be hitting with uh, with Valkyrie 90 green yeah, Valkyrie so we're going to stop there um, interesting data here um, I'll leave these here just in case I mean I may find out that they're okay to shoot but this is not
probably not an ideal scenario because um, I don't want to have a catastrophic failure. So let's go ahead and stop shooting these. And then um, I got a piece of steel out there. Um, my 22, I'll shoot with that for a while and then uh, I'll pull in my target and we'll probably get out of here. But this is kind of all I wanted to shoot today was mainly the Valkyrie, but I brought my 22 just in case I had some extra time. And I do, because I have the day off actually. So, and it's still early, it's only seven o'clock. So we'll shoot some 22 and then uh, we'll call it a day. Wow, that's weird. Getting a light strike. What's happening here? Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean this gun. Wow, that's a, what happened here? Oh, this is not good. Okay, that was, why did we get, two, we got three light strikes this morning. That's not good. Yeah, that's not good. Hmm, so weird. Here's a close up of the Reloader 17 groups. This is 26.2, 26.4, and 26.6. And I stopped going in 26.8 and 27, even though that's 27 is the max, because I'm hitting already, um, the minimum was already hitting the 
the max velocity according to the Sierra's data. So 27 was supposed to hit, 27 grains was supposed to be 2,700 feet per second, but I'm already hitting over 2,700 feet per second with 26.2. So I decided to stop. Um, the groups aren't all that great anyway. Um, it would go like first round, second round, third round, fourth round, fifth round. This was a pretty good group until I threw this one. This was like round four. Um, this looks good, but then I don't know if this was me or, or what, but it looks promising, but I'm concerned that the Reloader 17 data in the Sierra book is not accurate. Um, I'm going to confer with other resources or other sources to see what the, how Reloader 17 should be performing. But, um, other than this, these two, but I mean, you look at that, it looks good. You look at this, this looks great, but except for this, and then I don't know what's going on here. I'll have to say that it was not an ideal day today. Um, the Valkyrie did, still didn't shoot very well. Like, well, it shot an inch group, right? Uh, generally uh, across the board, if that. Um, I was hoping to get better with the hand loads, but I was unable to attain that today. Uh, my CZ455 was having some light strikes for some reason, constantly, every other round. Um, I didn't record the whole string, but I was shot at several mags. It was constantly like light striking. So I got to take apart the bolt. I honestly don't know how to take the bolt off the top of my head. I didn't memorize it, but I've done it a couple times already. So when I get home, I'll just go off of instructions online and I'll take apart the bolt, strip it, clean everything down. And hopefully that solves it because there's an NRL 22 match this weekend that I'm going to shoot. So hopefully it's just a fact that the bolt's dirty and I haven't cleaned the gun in a while too. I probably shot a few couple thousand rounds already. And uh, so that thing's pretty fouled up. And like an idiot, I hit the edge of my tailgate with my steel my uh, steel target stand. Um, so I put like a one millimeter nick on there and took the paint off. So I'm gonna have to uh, hit it with some touch up paint when I get home. It's aluminum. This the uh, skin on these uh, tailgates are aluminum on the Jeeps, so it's not gonna rust. But it looks, you know, just want to go ahead and touch it up because you have this unsightly exposed area right there. So it is what it is. Um, anyway. Uh, not a great range session, but it's a range session nonetheless. Um, it's nice to be out and shooting. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of it. Um, not really much going on today. I've actually finished up a lot earlier than expected. It's not even 8 o'clock yet. It's just 7.54, so it's barely 8 o'clock. Probably going to go home, unpack, clean off that uh, tailgate a little bit, then uh, touch it up with some touch-up paint. Um, then maybe try to cut this vid uh, and edit it and get it ready to go for tomorrow morning. And then... Uh, Maybe I'll go watch Avengers if it's still available in the theaters because I have not seen um, Endgame. It's funny enough, I have not seen Endgame because I just hate going to watch movies when there's huge crowds. And uh, <laughs> that's why I never went to watch it. And then I usually try to watch movies like that, uh, matinees on a weekday, like three, week or four, three or four weeks after it comes out. But it just hasn't had time. And since they re-released it, I think, with more footage at the end, I figure it's a nice time to watch it. But I'm not entirely sure if there's a movie theater close by that has still is actually still showing it if the one next to my house is showing it then i'll go watch it there but i don't know anyway that's kind of it today is wednesday uh, july 17th here at the west end gun club uh thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next vlog